addition to having Ben Gantz in our recent uh, exhibition of New York City, uh, we also have some really prominent uh, artists, including Guy Wiggins here, this nice gem of a small painting here, dealing with Wall Street, which he's known for, uh, and we have the flags, you have the Trinity Church, you have the Federal Building, you got the people, you got the, the, the cars, you got everything you want in this wonderful piece by Guy Wiggins, who was born in New York. His father, of course, was a well-known land, uh, landscape artist. Uh, Mr. Wiggins is also one of the youngest members to have a work accepted by Metropolitan Museum of Art. You could easily tell he was influenced by French Impressionism and also by Child Hassam. And we were just fortunate enough to have this work uh, here for the show. Here's a work by the artist Leon Delis. He was born in uh, Vienna. He came to New York around the 1920s. And he loved his new city that he lived in. And he did a lot of pastels of New York City, basically the Chrysler building. Here we have a wonderful oil. And with this lighting here, it becomes very dramatic uh, of the city. It almost looks like the American flag colors, which he, oh, which he sometimes used. And also, um, uh, the, the, the work by Dolis, some people comment, reminds them of a Batman movie or Gotham City. It's one of our pieces here that really brings a lot of attention. Now we show a monumental work by the artist Ernest Feeney. Mr. Feeney is born in Germany. He um, wants to escape it during World War I, 1912 or so. He goes to Holland and eventually ends up in America and becomes an American citizen. And here I think he's paying homage to his new city. Uh, 120 Wall Street, 40 Wall Street being built, the Singer Building, the Woolworth Building, the Brooklyn Bridge, he's really giving you a great view of New York City. This gentleman had a tough night, but this guy is looking at the promise of the city that Ernest Feeney now is a member of, and I think it's just showing the, the, the energy, the magnetism, and also what's going through his, his, his mind, this gentleman, as he looks at this great scene of New York. Uh, again, this was done in 1931. As we move on in this exhibition, uh, where here is another Guy Wiggins, and this is a Columbus Circle. And again, you got a, the, the flags, you got this wintry scene. What I also like uh, are the cars and the vehicles, giving you a sense of the 1920s and 1930s of New York. And again, um, you can see the influence, once again, of French Impressionism and, and Child Hassel. Uh, after looking at a, another wonderful Guy Wiggins, a winter scene of New York, well, eventually we're rewarded and spring and summer come. And here is a work giving us a beautiful beach day, and this happens to be Staten Island. This is by Cecil Bell, uh, an artist who was born in Seattle. He comes to New York as an engraver, an illustrator, and eventually um, he gets out to Staten Island. And here's just a, a painting that you want to jump in there and just enjoy that wonderful warm weather. It's so colorful and so exciting. Now we come across a work by Johann Bertelsen, who was born in Copenhagen, and he comes to America, a very theatrical guy, um, was in shows and also was an opera singer. Uh, eventually becomes a painter, thankfully, and he's known more for his winter scenes. I actually like the nocturnal scenes more, in my judgment, and here's one of the United Nations, uh, probably, I believe, like in the late 40s or early 50s, right after the UN uh, was just built. And, you know, I've never seen it that well lit. Is it artist liberty? Maybe, but maybe that's how they, it was a celebratory day when the UN was first open or July 4th celebration. Uh, now we come across an, an artist that's really associated in New York, Reginald Mars. Uh, he was born in Paris, comes to America, goes to Yale. He becomes an illustrator and also a writer for the New York Daily News. He's known for his uh, burlesque women, risque New York gritty New York, and here is doing an example of looking at the New York City uh, uh, escape here uh, on June 8th or June 5th, 1937 from Bedloe's Island, which I believe is called Liberty Island these days, and it's another wonderful example of a New York City subject. Now we come to another Johann Bertelsen. You can never go wrong with the Brooklyn Bridge, what an iconic uh, landmark for New York City, um, and this is Moonlight over the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, again, I love his nocturnal scenes and all the activity in the harbor with all the smoke emanating from the various um, uh, ships and boats in the harbor. Uh, just wonderful New York City scene. Now we come to an artist from Martin Kalin, uh, an artist from Philadelphia, uh, studied under uh, with Robert Henry and people like that. And here we have a really kind of a funky work of, uh, uh, on paper. Um, 
by Mr. Kalen of Coney Island. And if you're talking about Coney Island, it should be a little bit funkier. Uh, great colors, uh, wonderful imagery, uh, fun to see all the folks and having a great time at, at Coney Island, and the American flag scattered about. And we are fortunate enough to have two brothers in our show. One is Reynolds Beal, and one is Gifford Beal, and they both were uh, students basically at William Merritt Chase. And the work we have here of Reynolds Beal depicts New York, probably in the early New York, uh, probably actually done in the, uh, in the 1900s, 1910 area. And we're very fortunate to get a look at old New York City here. Uh, sandwiched between these two wonderful pastels by Leon Delis, an artist we spoke to earlier with the oil, the dramatic oil uh, painting. Um, uh, these depict the Chrysler Building in downtown New York. Uh, we have now uh, the Skippered Beale, and some people say, Neil, you know, um, they may wonder why this is in a New York City themed show. Some people have thought it might be Central Park, but I think it's a stretch. Uh, it's called FET, Holiday Celebration. Um, it, it, it may be just a generic view of the artist. It may be upstate New York, or I acquired it in New Orleans, but I'll tell you why it definitely belongs in a New York City show. It's a two-sided painting. It's kind of fun. Here you got Central Park, and that's definitely New York. Um, and so uh, it's funny, I, I, when I first came out of law school, I worked for a gentleman named Tom Carvello, who he always made the point of buy one, get one free. <laughs> that's probably how I can, you can look at this painting if it becomes part of your collection. Here we have an interesting painting by Sheldon Penoyer. Uh, Mr. Penoyer was actually one of the monument men that uh, George Clooney in a recent movie made famous the gentleman uh, in the military who sought after and found uh, art that was stolen by the Nazis. Uh, uh, Mr. Penoyer was a lifelong member of the military. Sadly, he died in a car accident. He was also members of some distinguished clubs, including the Union League Club. And here we have uh, a nice example of Sutton Place, probably in the 1940s, 1950s. And here's uh, a work by Lee Jackson, a born in New York, um, studied at the Art Students League. And he's doing his uh, really fun uh, painting titled Jiggerbugging in New York City with these flags and it uh, looks like maybe the park and, uh, and just a nice example by this artist. And uh, one of our final pieces I'll be showing you today at the exhibition is a work by Jerome Myers, um, children having fun in the park, it's West 68th Street uh, and get to see the west side of New York in the background. Uh, just a, a painting that really fits into this New York City theme show.